Listen, bravo. I have to listen to Trick Daddy before I can bring you to rehab. The recap. Don't pretend to be. For the thugs, I'm for the streets to say for the hood. Get away, I don't even need the for you book cats. Nigga, okay, anyways, I need a trick daddy because I, I refuse. This is my last season watching Real Housewives of Potomac. I refuse. And I have on my shirt. Nah. Okay? This is intentional. Rosa Parks, 1955. Nah. Okay? That's the mood I'm in. You don't like it, don't watch my show. I don't really care. I'm going to talk about the facts. It's not an emotional fight. We're just going to talk about the facts, okay? And before we get started, I would love all of the Giselle people who love Giselle. She can't do no wrong. Come to the front. I want to hear from y'all, okay? I want to hear y'all explain your way out of this bs that happened on this reunion i would love to know because what twitter has said to her followers is the reason that candace gets treated the way candace has been treated is because candace has a harsh mouth she goes below the belt her words is the reason she got beat up ain't that what y'all said when monique beat her up it's her words her words she deserved it it's her words. she needs to stop talking to people that way she needs to stop going below the belt. Right? Oh, someone called me. The devil, listen, he's a lie, okay? Anyways, she needs to stop using her, she needs to stop being, stop going below the belt, going below the belt. But I want someone who, def who defends Giselle and her stance point, because everybody has, they can feel whatever they want, okay? Here on Chanel's reality, you feel whatever you want. But I would like, for the Giselle fans, the people who say Candace goes too below the belt, help me understand if we're going to use the wordplay as the baseline, I would like for y'all to tell me what's, what word that Candace use that's worse than Giselle saying this lady's husband made her feel uncomfortable, made her go into a hotel room and shut the door. Those are words, right? Y'all saying words have all the weight, way more weight than someone beating you up. So just give it to me raw. Give it to me raw. I didn't already say it. You say something about my husband, come see about me. I don't play them type of games. Not at all. And it is, it is, it is difficult enough as a social worker, to have to constantly console victims who don't get believed, right? Because she must have done something, right? Constantly don't get believed. And this type of ish is what they're going to use for the next victim. Giselle lied about that man. He, Y'all wanted to put, hey, we not supposed to believe, right? That's what they're going to use, I can promise you. See, men, men do, men don't always be at fault. That's what's going to happen. And nobody's saying all men are at fault. What I'm saying is they're going to use this anecdotal situation where Giselle used her words to try and cause division in this lady's marriage, right? To get this lady to think, I don't know, would my husband have done that? To, to make an, a problem in between this lady and her husband. And guess what? I am the person, the loudest person, saying we need to believe victims no matter what. And even with even with Giselle, I said multiple times, I'm certain Giselle felt uncomfortable, right? I 100% believe she felt uncomfortable. No one's denying that. You can feel uncomfortable. What you can't do is say that he did something to me when he did not. This is what you said out of your mouth. This is what y'all favorite said out of her mouth. She said, she sat on Karen's couch and said, you know, this man made me feel uncomfortable. Karen says she was hard 
when she was in college. Karen understands what it feels like to be hard. Right? So she's probably the first perfect person to come talk to, in my mind. Especially with Karen's responses. Karen initially said, she said, well, did he touch you? Nope. Did he say something to you? Nope. Okay, but what did you tell him? I said, can you go and see if they're ready for me to come back? Well, what did he do? He immediately left. So again, if we're going to talk about reckless words, you just said out of your mouth, Giselle, he didn't touch me. He didn't say anything vulgar to me. He didn't infer anything. When I asked him to leave, he immediately left. So what exactly is your motivation to come on TV to thousands of millions of people you can't get it back. You can't unring that bell. It's it, it's there forever. Be clear. Then, after all of that goes on, she gets in her confessional the following season, which is this season, and doubles down and says, he made me go into a hotel room. This is what Giselle said on national TV again. It started off as he made me feel comfortable. Now he made you go into a hotel room. Again, I'm a person who works with people uh, that have been essayed. It's been my whole career. It's been my whole career. And it breaks my heart. Truly it does. You know why? This lady has to sit on this couch and try to defend her husband against nonsense. This, this other lady gets to go on by her life unchecked. I get to keep my good job and I also get to defame people's character. This ain't the first time the season before that. It was, it was Wendy's husband. He must have been, you know, she must have. Wendy's so insecure. She went and got her whole body done because she's so insecure about booty models that her husband follows on Instagram. I would like to know what man <laughs> that is straight doesn't look at porn. I don't know one. Can y'all send me some? Because I don't know one. So what's worse than that? Okay, so he's looking at booty models. Who cares? When you put on the porn on the TV, you're looking at booty and everything else in between. Stop it. Stop with the... I cannot. This is why I got to go get Trick Daddy. Because this is nonsense. And don't even get me started on Andy. I got something for you. I got something for you. What we're not going to do is blame Candace because idiots, people who are not wrapped all the way, have chosen to attack Giselle and say egregious things like, I hope you D.I.E. I hope your, your children get art. I hope I'm coming to your house to do all these things. I don't like Giselle, but I'm a sane I'm a sane individual. And even though I don't like her and her egregious behavior, I still think it is unacceptable to go online and bully people. I think it is unacceptable to threaten people. Period point blank across the board. It's never gonna change. It's not changing over here. I don't like her. I think what she did is egregious because it's not just one time. Candace isn't the first. She's done it since season one. She came on here, what, season four or five, telling the world that, oh, my other cast member, Monique Samuels, we don't know if that's her, that, if that's her husband's baby. That's the trainer's baby. That's okay. When we talking about words, we're so, we're so, oh my God, Candace, you're using your words to destroy me and that's why people should have the right to beat her up. What should they do to Giselle? She's over here telling a whole lie about a whole married man who ain't bothering nobody. He ain't bothering her. Now she, I'm going to tell a lie over here. This lady must, must be so insecure. And I love what Wendy said to her at the reunion. You sit up here talking about my husband. I got my body done because I'm insecure and my husband, I need to do this to keep him. Giselle, come to the front, sis. Wendy said... You got a tummy tuck. Did you keep Jamal? Let's talk about it. Yeah. 
So all of these words that we can't take, we can't have Candace have words. We that we're against violence. As long as it was against Candace, we're against it. Now that it's against Wendy, because we don't like her this season after she read me from head to toe, because I tried to insinuate that she's insecure and talk about her husband having a side baby that he never had. Have I have I heard a I apologize? Not ever. It's egregious. Why are you doing that? You're doing it because you hate yourself. There is no other reason. You're alone. The guy you chose to have children with was playing you from the word go. What did Monique say? Swinging his big D around the congregation? I'm not saying allegedly. Why? Giselle got on here on the whole, you know, internet or Bravo and said, you know, my husband's a, my ex-husband was a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. You notice all of these people with these words and how dare she say these words to me. Let's talk about the wordplay that they've said to her. And let's be clear, Candace and Wendy have only responded to the BS that is thrown at them. When did Candace just come out of nowhere and attack Giselle for nothing? I'll wait. Yeah, never. When did she come out of nowhere and attack Robin? When? Put it in the comments. I want to know. Maybe, listen, I'll even put it, I don't have the greatest memory. So put it in the comments. Tell me when she did it. Let me go watch it again. Maybe maybe something wrong with me. But I I, I invite, because I know I'm a Leo. And yes, I do think I know it all, if you haven't noticed. But just let me know. Tell me why I'm wrong. I have no problem with, with saying, you know what? I was wrong about that. I have that ability. It's called maturity. Growth. <laughs> I, I don't act the same now that I did when I was 12. But we're going to get into it. So let's get into it. I was a little heated. <laughs> gotta, what, I got to come back to my regular self? Child. I'm so disappointed right now. I, I'm disappointed because I believed for some unknown reason that Andy Cohen was going to try his best to hold Giselle accountable and he didn't. He let her run wild. He let everybody believe that he... Let me tell you what they did. This, is, this was the setup. For us, right? It's the setup. It's let's drop this this seating chart so we can make people believe this reunion is gonna be different. And Andy's not gonna be biased, and they're gonna hold her to the fire, these people with these egregious allegations that are lies. Let's be very clear. We're gonna let's let's trick them into thinking. Let me get my popcorn ready because listen. This reunion is going to be different. Some people are going to be held accountable. <laughs> yeah. I bought into it. I was like, you know, at first, because at first I'm not that girl. It's like, I don't even care about a seating chart, if I'm being honest. But because I know this, this is, this, these types of shows in general, it's, it's to get people up and riled and whatever. Andy knows, just like the whole production company, all of them, they know. They know that black America people that look like me are pissed about this because we see the double standards that are everywhere. We see them. People want to say, oh, it's not colorism. It's not. You don't see the clear difference that's being made. It's okay for, for Candace to get, get beat up. You know, it's fine. It's okay for Wendy to get beat up. We can we can argue that away because because what it what it Robin MZ what did they say R M Z instead of T M Z she's filming it after after this lady has gotten assaulted and she telling the lady that got assaulted to stop antagonizing the person that assaulted her <laughs> really so I'm supposed to sit here and let this lady bully me are you kidding me right now but then again. Robin lets Juan bully her. He he can go pay for whole hotel rooms, according to Robin. And then he cleans out his phone. Okay? Because he can't have all that information in his phone. It's just something he does. Girl. 
Listen, I never disliked Robin, really. Not really. I've been I've been watching this show for all eight seasons, and every season someone is begging Bravo to get rid of her. And I never felt like she needed to go. People are always like, oh, she doesn't bring anything, whatever. I, I'm not an advocate to just let just fire someone from their job just because you don't feel that they are, you know, whatever it is you want them to be. If Robin is okay with her relationship with Juan, let that lady, she's okay with it. I ain't mad at her because she okay with it. Would I do it? No. But I ain't mad at her because she okay with it. Just like I'm not mad at people on other, other shows when it's like, culturally, I need my wife to, you know, be trained up. I'm not the girl you can train, clearly. But if that's their relationship, listen, whatever works for you, that's what you should do. That's what I believe about relationship help. Whatever works for you. If it's going to make you happy, stay. If you can't be happy, go. It's easy as that. And I know sometimes it's more complicated, especially if you have kids and stuff. I get it. But I'm not going to be that, that lady that walks in my house and clearly can see my husband's cheating and is like, oh, let me go back outside. <laughs> Cause he's a billionaire. That's a that's a anyway. If you if you know, you know. But anyways, um, so we're gonna get into it. I'm just I'm done. I'll watch the next what is it, the next two, if they have three, whatever it is. I'm gonna watch it because I'm I'm hopeful that they're gonna turn it around, but I know that I know better. I don't know why I'm hoping this, because I know better. I know better. They're not, they're not gonna turn it around. It's not gonna happen. It was a ruse for them to give us this seating chart to try to get all the bloggers and YouTubers and everybody, content creators, a buzz so that so that we can get our fans or our subscribers or people who like us, whatever it is, to watch this reunion. It's 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 interesting to me that a very prominent black led magazine, Essence magazine wrote a whole op-ed about the colorism that's going on. And somehow, there is just a group of people on, on planet Earth that love the green-eyed bandits, and therefore, colorism can't be a part of it. I even, here on YouTube, I have people all the time, there's not color. Really? Let me just educate the people that think colorism doesn't happen, and it's not a part of this. You would have to, to, to say that colorism isn't present in this particular ecosystem called the housewives of Potomac, you would then have to agree that racism doesn't exist there either. Because guess what? Colorism is a component of racism, right? Race is a construct. Be clear. It is not a real thing. It is a construct made by men. So that they can categorize people based on their features, right? Please go read a book if you don't understand it. It is what it is. I'm not offended. I'm not intentionally trying to offend anyone. I'm just giving you the facts. That is what it is. It is a construct, right? So it's a construct made by man based on one's features, right? So dark skin, light skin, yellow skin, Big lips, little lips, no lips, big nose, small nose, thin nose, long hair, straight hair, curly hair. These are all features that people, human beings, have put in place so that we can characterize and give people whatever level of whatever it is that we want them to have. That is where race comes into play. It is an imaginary thing that man has come up with to separate people so that they can say the people with the light eyes are better. The people with the skinny noses are better. The people with the long hair are better. The people with the blonde hair are better. The people with the short hair are better, whatever it is. They can get away with it because people refuse to rebut the system out of fear, out of I won't be a part of, whatever it is. But we're not going to play this game on Chanel's reality. We're going to live in reality over here. It's not changing over here. If you can sit on the internet or on your phone or in the kitchen or wherever you are in your world and say, it is not colorism. 
you then have to say, if you say, I believe there's no colorism on this show and colorism is a component of racism, you then have to conclude there is no racism either. Can you say that with 100% certainty? You can't. And you know you can't. So, you can't say racism exists in the world, but this particular show is void of it. How? Take a moment. Think about it. Think about what you're thinking about. Think about how you're putting it all together. Why it makes sense for them to say, how dare Candace have all these words? How dare Candace respond to attacks on her husband? How dare she do that? We're glad she's finally leaving. Y'all are so glad this lady is finally leaving. You know how glad y'all are? Because y'all can't stand her, whoever those people are. They're so happy that she's leaving that they can't do anything but sit on the couch and on the internet and talk about this lady who they're so happy to be done with. You clearly aren't. You can't be. I don't sit around and talk about people I hate. People I think need to be gone. I don't. Why am I talking about people that I hate? I'm not. And be clear, I don't hate Giselle or Robin or any of them. I think they're disgusting human beings for what they're doing to these women. I do. Why we can't just, why, why is it that we're, we're downing Candace because her mom has generational wealth? Anybody down in Paris Hilton? She was born her and Nikki Hilton. And according to their, you know, trust fund, even when they didn't have Paris wasn't on TV and all that, she still had a trust fund, according to E or whoever did that documentary that said each her and her sister were left like $30 million. They were children or teenagers, whatever. Ain't nobody questioning. Did what Paris, you're 30 years old. Why is your mom paying for your penthouse? No one cares. We expect that. But how dare this black lady come on the show and have parents that are doctors and distinguished people in the, in the esteemed people in society? How dare they give her a trust fund? No, she needs a struggle life. And since her mama didn't give her one, let's make fun of her the entire time she's been on here. Let's make fun of her mom giving her something. She didn't have to open her legs and lay on her back to get it. There's a difference. Okay. There is. Ashley, you have nothing to say, sweetheart. Please add me. I promise you I'm not the one. <laughs> She's not the one. I will read you from head to toe. All day long, I will. Read you from head to toe. Will we'll do. Just like Candace. Except I maybe won't go as low. But I'm certainly going to read you from head to toe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you just laid on your back to get what you wanted. You can say whatever you want to say about Candace. But at the end of the day, if her mom gave her the money, that's a blessing. You should uplift her. The fact that you want to be rude to her and mean to her, says something about you. I don't know about y'all, but I uplift my friends. Crazy idea, huh? <laughs> I uplift my friends. I'm happy when, when they're happy. I'm happy when they succeed. I'm not belittling them but i also am not an envious jealous hater so there's that so Giselle has no man not that having a man means anything in my in my mind about your worth but what does mean something is how are you that pretty and nobody wants to stay with you nobody is willing to put up with how, no matter how beautiful you are they're not willing to stay around why Help us understand. You can come on Chanel's reality, Giselle, and explain it to us. Robin, beautiful. Knowingly remarried a man who already treats her treacherously. Who she's already divorced because he was cheating on her. And then after she found out he was cheating on her again, still married this man. And here's the thing. I'm not mad at Robin at all. Do whatever makes you happy. Whatever works for you and mom. I am happy to be like, girl, listen, that's you in your life. I ain't listen. Don't bother me. I don't care. Plus, I know when, like I said, it's nuanced. If you have kids, if you love the guy, whatever it is, people will push their feelings aside 
and say, you know what, let's just keep working at it. So I'm not mad at Robin because Robin wants to stay with Juan. That's 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 for whatever reason her safety zone. And she's not gonna change it. So we just listen, I gave up on that a while ago. I was like, okay, girl, whatever. But again, that's her business. I don't care. What I care about is unfair treatment that is happening. And at this stage, it's institutional racism. I say that for a reason. I'm a very intelligent person and I got all the education you can get, okay? So, you can say whatever you want. I don't really care as long as it's not, not don't like use profanity and stuff like that. You can say you disagree, whatever. I don't care. I, I'm, I, I welcome. I would love to know <laughs> how we making sense of this because I don't know. I have me and my opinion. I don't know how we're making sense of it. I don't. But I will say it's institutional racism, and this is why. If you, Bravo, know about the allegations, because you said, we asked the women, the ladies of the show, what they wanted to do if they wanted to bring someone in. You asked that because you, so you could come on here and say you asked that. Because anybody with a brain, Andy Cohen, with this much of a brain, can see out of the gate. That is not a reasonable request to ask these people. Why? It's because the people that are being mistreated are asked, do y'all want to, you know, have these people come and talk and host the show? But they're not only asking them, they're asking the cast. And let's be clear, the people that are being mistreated that are saying colorism is happening here, there's only two of them. They're outnumbered from the jump. And it doesn't take, it, it, is, it is a math problem you can do on a napkin. You know, there is not going to be fair treatment. You know, they can't win. There's no fair fight here. They, even if they said yes, they're outnumbered. So tell me how that's fair. So you not, it's not lost on me. I caught it from the, again, from the jump. I knew from the jump. Oh yeah, that's, that's a play. That's a, we did what we could. This is the response we got. But we knew it was a setup. We knew they were outnumbered to begin with. Right, Bravo? Right, Andy? Please say that I'm wrong because then you're not smarter than a fifth grader. It's just, pour me out. Tell me when I'm wrong. At me, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, I know I said about emotions. I'm emotional about this because I'm a whole brown lady and y'all don't even know what I've been through even just today. Savage. The healthcare system today? Child, if you knew, if you knew, the way I've been treated today, it's just awful. I'm sick. I've been in pain from 3 a.m., to like seven something this morning. I'm supposed to be having surgery. I went to the doctor. I was running late because I, even though I left an hour before to get there, it takes us 30, 30 minutes from my house. Of course, there's something happening, some construction, whatever it was. It threw off my time, added an extra 20 minutes to my route. So I'm calling my husband like, hey, can, cause he can't come with me today. He has a whole bunch of important meetings. Can you call the doctor for me and tell them I'm going to be late? He calls them and they say she can't be more than 15 minutes late. If she's here at 1116, we're turning her away. So I get there. This, this is a new hospital because this particular doctor has multiple locations. So, okay. I get there. I see the big sign that says, what does it say? Advanced orthopedics or something like that. Like, it's one of those places where it's like a shopping center, but it's like, you see the big sign and it's upstairs and downstairs. So I see the big sign upstairs, so I go upstairs. And I'm like, oh, this isn't it, because all those windows are blacked out. I'm like, okay, let me go back downstairs, because of where I parked. I go downstairs, I see people coming, I'm like, okay, maybe. So I go inside, there's an elevator, it takes me up to the second floor. I get to inside of the suite. I'm writing my name down, you know, um, patient or whatever. And the lady asked me my name and I tell her. Now, it's 11-11. You said to my husband, I have it until 11-15. Okay. It's 11-11. So the lady at the front, she says, 
Well, you know, they already canceled your appointment. I said, well, they told me. I had until 11.15. It's 11.11. I've already signed in. So I probably got there at 11.10, if I'm being honest. Meaning got up to her or whatever. And she says, no, they, they canceled it. I said, okay. Well, can you go and ask them if, if it would be possible? You know, for I'm here, please. I don't know what's happening. Something. It's outside screeching. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. So... I'm already emotional because of the type of pain I was in this morning. I literally, I've never had that kind of pain in my life. I've never thought this thought before in my life. But the thought that I had this morning was, y'all can just cut off both of my arms and my hands because this is excruciating. My hands and my arms, for whatever reason, feel like they're on fire. I've gotten a diagnosis, and at this point, I just need to go back to confirm with the, with, the, with the surgeon, hey, this is what the neuro person said, this is what we need to do, whatever. That's why I'm there. So that, because I'm just like, I know, I, I have to have surgery, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this pain. My doctor said, this is the only way to treat it. I know, because I work in healthcare, but I just work with people who have psych problems, Okay. So I know if you're going to go see a specialist, it's you might as well put on your calendar whenever you get your diagnosis or even before that. It could take two weeks to a month or two months, especially if they're good and high in high demand. It's probably two, three months down, down the way. I know that. Right. The pain I'm in today, I'm like, I can't wait. So I don't care what has to happen. Let me get to the doctor. <laughs> the lady comes back, she said. They said no. I said, can you go get those people to tell me that, please? Because I'm, I'm already fragile because I'm just frustrated of all the pain I'm in, right? But I've calmed down because I took some of the medicine and I'm a little more, I'm okay. I'm, I can deal with this. Child. That lady comes out and tells me, <laughs> you, we can't see you. The doctor's busy, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, my husband called. He said that as long as I'm there before this time, that's what I was told. I'm here before the time that you guys gave me. No, we're not going to be able to see you. We can reschedule you. You can see, I, we, we can't, you know what? You can see our pain doctor so that they can, you know, give you some pain management. What? <laughs> what she's not understanding is she, she doesn't understand. I say to her, look, ma'am. I am in I am in so much pain. She cared not. <laughs> I'm trying to explain to her how this is so important to me. I really need to have this surgery. I can't function. My husband in the middle of the night is up with me suffering. He needs to go to work in the morning, even though he's going to his office, but it's still he has to be competent, he has to be alert and all that, right? He's in charge of a lot of important people and a lot of important decisions. I'm keeping him up because I'm in so much pain. And he's up because he loves me, right? Right. I just was so astonished. I'm just like, wow. And you know, the sad part is I couldn't, when I got back in my car, I couldn't even think to myself, I can't believe this happened. Because because two years ago, I had a surgery. I won't go into all of it because I talked about it on the, when with Dr. Jackie, that stuff. And I had people in the healthcare. Just, I don't understand how you treat someone this way. I don't, I don't get it. I told her, I said, ma'am, I've spent my whole, whole, my whole adult life in service to others. I'm a social worker and a therapist. That is all I've done my whole entire life is be there, be a voice for people who don't, who don't have a voice. She doesn't care about none of that. So I, I try to appeal to her, you know, human side. I say, I say to her, I say, imagine I'm your 85 year old grandmother. Somehow I'm trying to get here. I get in traffic. I call. They tell me, they tell your 80 year old grandmother, just come as long as you're here. You can't be later than this. She shows up. She's in excruciating pain because you've been with her witnessing this, right? And the person says, no. <laughs> Even though we told you you can come here as long as you get here, we don't care about that. The, doc the, the doctor has other patients to see. I don't understand it. I can't make sense of it. I tried to make sense of it. But then the lady says to me something about, because I said, you don't understand. I'm in so much pain. You don't understand. What are you talking? I can't, you can't even, I can't even put it into words. 
how how egregious I, I just I, I was just like you you don't understand so she says to me I do understand my mom was sick in the set and the third and then I just went completely off I was like ma'am don't do that my mom is dead she died of cancer okay please don't do that let's not do the my situation is worse than your situation because I promise you I'm gonna beat you I sit here and I smile and I'm nice and I am a social worker and I'm all of that but you don't know my story you don't know what I've overcome. Most people, if they had to go through whatever I've been through, they probably would have jumped off a bridge already. But with, even with all of everything, I still manage to treat people with kindness and grace. I do. I still manage to be forgiving. I'm not bitter. I'm not. It's an active choice. It's part of who I am, just... I feel like I'm just wired that way in general, but it's an act of choice to be kind or not. I have every reason to be a bitch and I'm just not one. Am I prickly and could I, you know, be selfish and a brat? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I know me. Listen, I spent 43 years being me. I know I'm an expert in Nikki. I'm, I'm an expert in Chanel. Okay. Understand that. But I just couldn't today. I just lost it. I, I walked out and I... I'm outside because like I told you, it's like you got You can go upstairs and I walk out and I'm sitting in the corner waiting on the elevator crying. And the elderly people that were also patients in there, three of them, one is on a cane, the other is with his wife or she's with her husband. I don't know exactly. They showed me more empathy than the, the health professional. These people don't know me from Adam. I'm sitting on my knees because I'm just broken at this point. Because I know that she knows, the nurse lady or whoever, she knows it's going to be extremely difficult to get another surgeon anytime soon. Because most surgeons, they want to do their own test. They want to have their own results. And I get it. If they're good, they're going to want to do that because they're going to want to make sure they have the best information to before you cut somebody open, right? I get it. I understand it. But understanding that, I know that means whatever my pain is, I'm just going to have to deal with it for probably a month at minimum. And I know that she knows that. I'm not stupid and I know she's not either. It's heartless though. How do these elderly people who don't know me from a can of paint come outside? They see I'm crying. They've heard what I'm saying. I'm literally begging this lady. I'm like, I need, I need this appointment. I couldn't take it anymore. I left. I'm sitting over there in the corner on the phone with my husband. He's trying to calm me down. They come over and they're kind to me. They hug me. No more crying today. I've decided no more crying. They hug me. They pray with me. These people don't know me. They ask me my name. Another lady comes. She's asking me my name. She's like, I'm going to pray for you when I go home. So, I'm emotional right now. And I'm choosing to come on here and just try to get through. It's a choice. I'm not a woe is me person. I'm not. I actively make a decision to be kind. Today, I was like, I quit life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. I'm stick fork in me. I'm done. I'm done. But I know it's not right. I have to do something about it. And and really, you know, it, it's it, it's heartbreaking because I'm like, how are these people? How do they not know me? And they have more consideration for how I've been treated than you do. And you're in healthcare. Help, help me understand. Words matter. Actions matter. This, this shenanigans that they got going on, it bothers my soul. Even though I know it's a TV show and lots of parts of it is fake and contrived and all of those things. But the part that I, I take issue with is 
saying things on this show that have real life consequences for the people on the show when they're not true. That's my issue with Giselle. If you have proof, whatever. But I'm saying what you're saying about this man, Giselle, if you're watching, I know you're not, but if you ever see this, what if that's, you know, your, your oldest daughter just went off, right, to college? And I'm sure you're proud and that's good. You did something great. I don't know. I'm genuinely saying that. Happy for you. Happy for her. What happens if someone she marries and loves gets lied on in such an egregious way? No one is ever going to say, you didn't feel uncomfortable. I can't tell you how you should or shouldn't feel. But I can say, you need to be careful with what you say about people when, whenever it has real life consequences. That man's life has been changed. And this is the thing. This is coming from a person who always says, believe the victims first. Prove that the victims are lying and I'm with you. But they usually aren't. But what's going to happen is people are going to be able to use this and say, see, men do. Da, 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 da. Women, are, women do lie about it. Victims do lie. That's, that's what's going to happen. From this, there are going to be people that use this and say, how do we know if we can really believe her? Look at what Giselle did. And, and it has no consequences. And I know there are going to be some people that say she does have consequences because people were giving her death threats and all that. That is true. And that's wrong. And I, like I said before, I'm never going to say that that's OK. Not ever. But it's it's equally wrong. To say that about someone's husband and, you know, because you said he didn't touch me. He didn't say anything to me. When I asked him to leave, he left. Just make it make sense. Anyway, I haven't even started the recap. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go through this real quick because I have my little notes and I'm just going to because I'm not gonna hold y'all. Um I wanted to say this because this did make me laugh. I want to say the things that made me laugh first, okay? Roll with me just for a second, guys, okay? Hold on. Sorry for my interlude. Um, so this was hilarious to me. And I thought about this. Okay, so there is a scene where I think they break. I don't know if it was before the break or whatever. But Mia's in, the, in her dressing room or whatever. And she's talking to her new boyfriend. Okay? Ink or whatever his name is. And as she's saying, you know, you like my dress and my split and whatever else. Gordon walks in at some point. I'm like, ooh, -wee. and Mia says, hey, Gordon, or she says, Ink, ooh, Gordon's here or something to that effect. And he says, Gordon says, oh, hey, my, hey, guy, whatever, you know, how you doing? Listen, <laughs> I thought about something because I couldn't, I was just like, ooh, I thought about something. And I said to myself, actually, I have a cousin. Okay, I'm not going to give too many details. But anyways, I have a cousin and I think it was her second child. I remember she had her, her boyfriend, who was her new boyfriend. And then she had her baby daddy. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I, I was just kind of like, because she had both of them in the in the delivery room. I'm like, where they do that at? Who? Where they do that at? <laughs> and then, and then it came to me today. Okay? Came to me. I figured it out. I I have figured it out. I figured it out how Mia could have Ink, the boyfriend, on the FaceTime and have Gordon, the husband, speak to each other and it's all good. I figured it out. You know what it is? Sudden Strat, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She said it. She named it. She gave it a whole name. She said, I have a magical pussy. <laughs> I was like, yes. That's what Mia has. Mia and my cousin. They clearly have a map. <laughs> Where we do that at? I can't. Anyways, that that I thought was just hilarious. When I came over, I was like, oh, you know, Sutton said it was, you know, Sutton's a whole riot on her own. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay. If this is your first time here, welcome. 
Thank you so much for joining Chanel's Reality. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and comment on whatever it is you want to comment on. As long as we can just be respectful, okay? Okay. Um, okay, let me get into what I wrote here. All right. I wanted to say this. I'm extremely disappointed and disgusted, genuinely, by Andy allowing Giselle to be condescending, reckless, egre make egregious statements that are untrue and comments that are really unacceptable. And, and, and it's just, she made such terrible comments. I just, it's, it's mind blowing. She's making these statements to Candace, even though Candace is the person that you're trying to ruin her whole husband's life. Candace is responding to you. And if, if we be in a hundred, if you make those type of ac accusations, false statements about my husband, please come see about me, about my husband. I don't play those type of games. We all going to jail today. No, I'm not going to jail. But I'm saying, I don't play that. I don't play games like that. I really was hoping that, that there would be a situation where Andy would wake up and say, wait a minute. How are you blaming this lady for whatever it is she's saying and saying it's egregious? She can't say this. Her mouth is reckless. You don't think your mouth is reckless when you're on here saying that this man did something to you? When you said out of your mouth, he didn't know anything to you. That's what you said. You said he made you feel uncomfortable. Let me be clear. Let me clear that all the way up for you, Giselle, and everybody else. The man didn't make you uncomfortable. What you were uncomfortable with, Giselle, is what this meant to you. That's what made you uncomfortable. You were uncomfortable about the situation, the optics. You said, I don't want to be in a room. I don't want nobody to think I'm in a room with a man and whatever. And that's understandable. I'm not going to say you didn't get uncomfortable because of what the situation was. Chris didn't have an action. That would have, he would have to have an action for you to be uncomfortable, for you to say he made you uncomfortable. You could be uncomfortable all day long for people that you don't like. That doesn't mean they've done something to you. I've been uncomfortable with my boss, male and female. Not sexually, but I've definitely been uncomfortable. I can't say things like that and then lewd and then say, and then, then gaslight Candace because she sat there and gaslit Candace the entire time. She did. The entire time. She acted like she did nothing wrong. Candace is, is, I understood why Candace is like, I got to go. <laughs> I get it. And people are lying. Nobody's passing up a check. Some people can pass up a check. Clearly, Candace is one of them. I promise you. I promise you. If Candace was Paris Hilton, no, and, I, and I have nothing against Paris Hilton. Let's be clear. I'm using her, for example, to point out. A very obvious thing, but for some people, it's not obvious. But I can promise you, if Paris Hilton decided no longer to be on the simple life the re the there is nobody that's gonna say well she just got fired because of her words and she got fired because we think no one's gonna pass up that kind of chick the people that think that clearly haven't been in the room with millionaires i have and i've been in i've been in the room with people that don't have anything and they still can walk away but because you hate this lady so much, we have to still believe. We can't just say, you know what? We hate her. She's gone. We have to then double down and be like, she couldn't have just left because this is a toxic environment she just no longer can deal with. We have to make it that she got that she got fired. That's what we have to do. We can't let her get away and think that she got away. We have to let her know that she got fired. Even though you have zero inside or clue whatsoever you don't you just made it up just like Giselle and yet y'all sit here and act like words don't matter they only matter when Candace says it right why is that why is it that the words are only very impactful and they're only below the belt when it's Candace Giselle can say her whole husband made her feel uncomfortable and insinuate this man sexually wanted to sexually a her then on the reunion, I never said that. When? 
Girl, we have a whole editing team that played it for us. What are you talking about? And I'm so disappointed with Andy because, Andy, I don't understand why you didn't hold her to the fire. Giselle, you said it. Oh, no, you said it. Just like you, Candace, you're a disaster on um Twitter. That's disastrous, Andy. In case you didn't know, it's disastrous to let this lady sit there and lie again and again and again and try to gaslight this lady. That is, it's beyond you listen, Andy, you can't do your job. What are you there for? No shade at all. I need you to do your job. I get it. Giselle's pretty and she's probably fun and whatever else. I get it. I understand it. Her being pretty and fun and y'all liking her can't be greater and outweigh this lady accusing this other lady's husband of egregious things and then saying she didn't say it. And y'all let almost a whole segment go by with this lady continuing to say, I never said that. I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh, the, pro the, pro the producers are saying, yes, she did. Why is it that the producers need to tell you this? You're the host. Aren't you the face of Bravo? And you don't know? You don't know? Help me understand. Me and my husband in the Bahamas. Guess what? When we're in the Bahamas, he's still in charge. Everything that goes on while he's gone, good or bad, is still contributed to him. How well he trained his team, who he put in charge, everything, how we're documenting everything, everything is still his fault. Period. He's the person that's managing these people. Andy, you are the face of this show and you sitting there allowing this lady to lie on this man again that's treacherous behavior you need to be fired you are not suitable to sit in that seat if you're not going to hold everybody to the fire why does this lady get to sit there saying constantly i didn't say he made me go in a, call, in a hotel room i never said that when it's on videotape what are you talking about but again wouldn't matter is institutional racism. These people didn't set it up. They allowed the editors to continuously play whatever they wanted. Any negative thing, Candace or Wendy said, it it got it was just put it on repeat. So I don't expect you to understand, Andy. I expect you to do your job. It needs to be a fair fight. This is not fair. It isn't. Y'all better than me. Because I was sued Bravo, NBC, and everybody else into the, in, within an inch of their life. Sure would. Mm -hmm. I got all day. I got time. Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. It's, it's treacherous, but whatever. Let's move on. Okay. Cause let's let's go let's go with because oh Giselle oh my God these people did this to me and it's like I said it's treacherous. People should not be making death threats. They should not be threatening her, her kids, none of that. But let's be let's be clear. What have you put this man through? What about him and his kids? Have we forgotten? He has children too. He has a family too. What has he done to deserve it? Just be responsible with your words. This is why on my Potomac read, I'm like, they not smarter than fifth graders. You can't be. How do you justify how you allow this? I don't understand. How you allow this is beyond me. And then you, you play it on TV so we can see how biased you are. I cannot. Wow. I just, it's the audacities for me. Okay. Let's see. It's just, I, I'm not even going to go. I'm not even, I, I can't even, I'm not even going to go down the list because I have a whole list of things that Giselle's done and said. And it's okay with all the Giselle lovers. It's okay to say, you know, Wendy got her body done because she's insecure. It's okay to say Wendy's husband has a side baby when he doesn't. Why is all of these, why are all these things okay to say? But we, can, but Wendy can't respond. Candace can't respond to the words that y'all say are just, you know, these words are so egregious. Talk to your girl Giselle about the egregiousness of words then. Have that conversation with her, okay? Have that conversation. It's so egregious what Candace said. I'm still waiting on y'all. Put it in the put it in the comments 
all the things that Giselle has said that's egregious that you know lives up to these words can catch hands isn't that what y'all said on, on, on the whatever twitter and whatnot about candace she needs it she deserves it finally somebody got her but we shouldn't go get we shouldn't we shouldn't have anything to say to giselle she's okay she's okay to make these type of egregious allegations it's okay why Cause she brown, she browner than me. I didn't initially want to believe that. But then when Bravo came through this season and continuously made sure that they highlighted everything that Candace said that was egregious and Wendy said that was egregious and made a conscious effort not to do none of that with Giselle, Robin, or Ashley. And Ashley brought a whole group of Sesame Street friends to, to fight this girl at y'all event. How y'all don't know that? Y'all didn't know she's problematic? Because let's be clear, another thing. This lady does not just get a mic pack and walk around your whole event with the cameraman because that cameraman followed her everywhere she went to go say hi to everybody. She had a mic pack on and a, cap, and a, and a, and a cameraman or woman. When have y'all, y'all didn't give that much camera time to Sharice. She the one started the whole show. Help me understand. Where did they, where they do that at? So all the people out here are like, no, there's no double standard. That ain't a double standard. You having a lady who attacked me, who brought her friends on this show to attack me and my husband and my family. You let this lady come to this event. Why? We're at work. I'm required to be here, right? So I can get my check. You intentionally put this lady in a hostile work environment. Stop me when I'm lying about something. Let's say it wasn't intentional. Let me give Bravo and the Bravo people a, a chance that maybe they're not. Maybe maybe they are smarter than a fifth grader. Let's let's just say let's just say they are. If you're smarter than a fifth grader, what's the appropriate thing to do? Andy, I'll, I'll wait. Doesn't take much brain power to figure out the answer. The answer is you need to advise Candace and anyone else that may have a problem with this person that has made these egregious statements, who've come onto this show and had her friends lie and made a big lie about my husband and y'all showed us the lie. Why not call Candace and say, you know what, sweetheart? This is what's going to happen. Because we know Ashley don't give a shit. We know that because Ashley brought the, the girl back on the show and is giving her more camera time. Bravo is giving her more, more camera time I ever seen Sharice get. Hello? Okay, thought so. It don't take much brain power. You did it intentionally. The show is in charge. The producers are in charge, right? Why do you think any person isn't just showing up and getting a mic pack? They are showing up because they're asked to be there. That is why that lady is there. And that is why that lady has a mic pack. And that is why that lady has a cameraman following her around. Be clear. Show me the email y'all sent, sent to Candace to say, hey, listen, this lady who's already tried to attack your husband, who already has attacked your husband. Let's not even, let's take the tryout of it because she did. Right? She accused this man of doing all this stuff and they showed us that's not what he was doing. Okay? You you think it's wise to, to bring that lady who's clearly reckless and a liar? <laughs> right? What is your problem? Help me understand the logic in this. All day long, this is a hostile work environment for her. You care not. And even when she said, please get her away from me. Y'all want to, oh, she called her this and she called her that. Yeah, you you been sat on this show. You came on this show and you tried to whatever, ruin my husband's credibility. You lied on my husband's name. Every time I see you, you get zero from me on sight. Be happy I didn't slap the dog shit out of you, okay? I don't believe in violence like that. But when you put the person in front of me, you push them on me. 
You're doing it intentionally. And that's why I said it's institutional racism because the institution has agreed to be a part of the bullshit. Hello? Stop me when I'm lying. Bravo didn't agree. Bravo don't have, Bravo just giving out microphones and cameras to everybody. Exactly. They're not. Let's not play wits with me because you're not smart enough. So don't do it. At me, Andy. If you bought that life. Come on, Chanel's reality. Explain this bullshit to me. Explain it to me. Like, I'm break it down to me like I'm a three-year-old. I went to school. I promise you, I have my college degrees. Advanced ones. So she is not a dummy. Be clear. Do I get everything right? I don't. But this shit, it's so flagrant. And I just, I cannot. Y'all want to hold this lady to the carpet about her words. But we're not going to hold Ashley to the carpet for bringing this lady who's accused this other lady, husband, of egregious bullshit. Like, what are we doing? I'm listen. I, I I'm gonna watch the rest of this this um re, what is it the reunion? I will not be in tuning into this. I cannot. It's egregious, and it's it's beyond words to me that y'all can sit up there and act like this is okay. Cause you don't like the girl. I don't like Giselle. I don't like her. I think she's she's a savage human being. I never liked Ashley. But if Ashley, if someone's doing something to Ashley that's wrong, I'm going to say it. I'm not a drone. Be clear. My God made me an original. Why on earth would I be a copy? I don't have low self-esteem. <laughs> Maybe I should. I don't. She doesn't. I don't. I know I'm not the prettiest girl, the most fit girl, and whatever else. I don't care. That I don't live up to whatever someone else's standard is. I live up to my standard. I like me. I love me. And that's all that really counts. Okay? Let's catch it. I can't. If I'm living and dying based on what someone else thinks of me, I'll always be dead. I'll always be down in the dumps. She don't roll like that. No. I don't. I don't roll like that. You can think whatever you want. I go to sleep at night and I sleep well because I treat people right. If you try me, that's on you. I'm not going to start nothing with nobody. But if you come over here bothering me, you get what you get. I have the right to protect myself regardless of whatever you think. I do. And I will protect myself. Be clear. Let's see. I thought it was bad. I did. I thought it was bad that, you know, Candace, I mean, uh, Karen had to be the person while they're gaslighting at, um, Candace and telling her that didn't happen. I never said it. while that's going on. Eventually, can uh, Karen steps in and she says, Candace, are you talking about the confessional? Where uh, Giselle says he made me go into a room. He made me go into the to the hotel room and shut the door. Candace is like, yes. Because Candace is sitting there, but like, are y'all serious right now? Like, she feels, ga I know that what she was feeling was gaslit. She's just like, are y'all serious? Am I crazy? I am so happy for you, Candace. I am so happy for you that you left this toxic malarkey behind you. Happy you came along, didn't want to see you go. I was like, oh no. But after watching this, this is what these idiots will say on camera. I can't imagine what they say when they're not on camera. Catch it. If you this reckless with a camera and a mic, child. You too, you too, Andy. Because it's reckless for you to let her sit there and lie time after time after time, seemingly for about 15 minutes, just lying. And the thing is, the people sitting on the couch with her know she's lying. <laughs> Y'all are just a whole mess. I hope Candace sues y'all. I do. She probably won't, but I hope she does. And I hope she wins. Because she has all the proof in the world. Child. How y'all would let this get it like this, I do not understand it. It's funny to me, though, how Andy, season after season, Candace, you're reckless with your mom. Candace, you're a disaster on Twitter. It's not a disaster. 
for Giselle to falsely accuse this man of something. That's not a disaster. It's not a disaster for y'all to allow Ashley to bring her ratchet, reckless friends onto this show so that they can lie also on her husband. That's not reckless. That's not a disaster. Hmm. Please send me your definition of disaster. Because <laughs> this sounds like one. Okay. It's not a disaster. It's not a disaster for whole season one for Giselle and Robin to be colorist and chase chase poor Katie around telling her her what are you gonna tell your kids? They're 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 Jewish, they're black. You're afraid you you act like it's a problem to be black. They they didn't turn it on her. What did Katie do? Katie around here, listen, trying to be married and have babies. <laughs> I love Katie. But Katie, you know, she's going through it. Whatever. My prayers go out to her. But we're gonna act like that didn't happen all season one. We gonna act like that? You protecting this woman's terrible, and it's not just her because Ashley is just as bad. But you're protecting the one of the most egregious things that has happened on this show because she's pretty and and funny. You can find pretty and funny anywhere. It doesn't. It didn't start with Giselle, and it's not gonna end with her. I, I personally would never want to be around someone that sinister. Like, I, I wouldn't want to be in their space. So, girl. But Karen gets the girls together. But, you know, I will say this. I feel like what happened here, it was hard to watch. But Candace said it in last season. Was it last season? Yeah. She said it last season when Giselle got on camera to, to make these lies up about this lady's husband. She said, y'all don't want me here. If this is what we're going to be, we're going to just, we're going to attack my husband. So this idiot producer says, well, you know, I can't do any, I can't, I can't, they, I can't stop them from saying whatever they're going to say anymore. And I can stop you from whatever you're going to say. Candace clocked it right quick. Yes. I say true shit. They are lying on my husband. What I said about Michael Darby I ain't the only one. Basically, the whole cast has said it. Even Andy. How is that the same? We're not going to conflate these issues right now. Like, I just, that's why when she said, y'all don't want me here, I was like, whoa. And she right. They did. I just hate, I, I hate that. I just, I hate this. I can't watch this show again. I refuse. I, I, I just, it started off as one of my favorite shows. Even though I didn't really love the first season, but I was just I'm like, okay, let's just, just see. I can't do this again. Y'all have no responsibility. If y'all don't take responsibility for this by the third season, I'm sorry, by the third uh, reunion part three, I'm out. Y'all already got Dr. Dr. Jackie over there was talking about black women are lazy and black women don't. What did, what did she say? We don't. Um, we exaggerate our pain. I thought about that today while I was at that at that doctor's office. I was just like, wow, it, it bothers my soul. That's why I did that whole review of, of her. And then doctor, it just it bothered my soul. Because what she was talking about and we're faking our pain or exaggerating our pain. I was like, okay, I get it. You're giving credence to this white lady over here. And I love white people, just like I love my black people. I don't discriminate against people. But I have to call a thing a thing. And this lady, this particular white lady, not all white women, but this particular one, you gave her all the credence in the world to say, even though this lady has everything she has, she has the, 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 the um, what do you call those things? The wristlets that say she had, she, she was under anesthesia today. The hospital I had it at. You have, I have cuts. The doctors examined me. He can see that I had surgery. Nope. She got to be lying. I just, I couldn't, I just, I, I couldn't, I was just like, am I crazy? <laughs> but you gonna call my husband because he's demanding that you take this IV out of my arm so he can take me to the hospital where they will give me some service where I had the surgery. That's when I realized, like, like I said, I live in Texas. I live in the South. I'm not, racism isn't something that I, I I've seen it everywhere. So let me just be very clear. 
I'm not overly, everything is racist and everyone is racist. I don't feel that way. But there's only so much, so many things you can see in a situation to be like, I can't excuse that away. So I had to just face the music. Even though my friends that are medical professionals, doctors, say, they said, they tried to tell me, I'm like, ah. Now I know better. And even today, don't get me started. <sighs> I said I'm going to come on here and do this, even though I should be asleep, because it makes me happy to come on here and um, and do this. So that's the reason I'm on here and not sleep in my bed. But trust, I got a warm bed waiting for me when I'm done with y'all. Um, let's see. What else did I want to say? Um, I feel like Candace and the boards that she, you know, I, I know a lot of people are like, please don't do that. I don't like that. I actually like that. So I'm weird like that. I actually like that. But I do think it's more effective if if it's like the show shows the, the wording. So I think maybe, oh, I was going to say maybe next year Candace, but she won't be there. But whoever the person, the target is next year, because we all know they target people. Instead of making a poster board, give it to production. Get their assurance that this can be put into the show. Because people will, it'll it'll be shorter, but it, it's more effective to get your point across. Just like if you bought, brought a poster board showing Chris not looking at Sesame Street Lady or at Mia or whatever, you brought that, people would kind of be like, okay. It, it's not as effective is what I'm saying. But when production shows and then makes fun of and saying Chris still not looking... That's when the audience is like, okay, we got it. Even though some of us got it, uh, you know, initially, them putting it like that, them showing the actual footage, you can't deny that. Even though footage can be manipulated and everything else. It's hard. It's hard to like, go, excuse me. It's hard to refute video. So, but it can be uh, altered. If I'm being fair. What else did I want to say? Yeah, I wanted Andy to... to it, see, this is the thing I don't understand. They made Candace the focus of this reunion, part one. And spent very little time on the reasons why Candace felt the way she did. Which is... We find out after the after the reunion last year that Robin and her husband had had a, a situation you know where he admitted to cheating on her whatever and they according to Robin they moved past it or whatever and I do believe it is fair for Robin to say you know what we were past that by the time we picked the cameras up and I don't feel like I have to show anything when that it's been cleared up once we pick the cameras up, I don't think she has to be. I don't think there should be a situation where she should have to drudge up things that they put to bed. Now, do I believe Robin? Absolutely no. But her point is still valid. I don't believe Robin. I, I believe Robin and her story about as much as we all believe Robin. No, I believe Robin and her story about as much as we all believe Juan is just a good Samaritan and paid for that lady's hotel room. For no reason that he doesn't even know other than the kindness of his heart. That's about how much I believe Robin's story about this was put to bed. I don't believe it. I don't. Because Robin, listen, God bless her. She just wants to be married to Juan. She's committed to it. It's so, uh, uh, we're not going to change our mind. It's just not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. So she's going to be miserable probably for the rest of her life. Because Juan is incapable of being what he needs, what she needs him to be. I think Robin, unfortunately for herself, as pretty as she is, she's committed. She's committed to not allowing the viewers to change her mind and make her look at her husband in any other way. She's also committed to showing, I guess, her her children that you know. Women will stay regardless of how treacherous the person that they're with is treating them. It's just it's bad. Anyway. Um 
I thought it was interesting that Aneka did say what, um, oh, she said, because when, because when Candace was like, well, y'all saying that what I said was so terrible or whatever, but then y'all got on my pot on y'all's podcast and accused my husband of this, that, and the third, and he had this side baby and all this other stuff, or he allegedly had sex with this woman. Y'all did that on your podcast. Bravo didn't play that and y'all didn't say sorry. And they didn't. They still haven't said sorry. They still believe. They still believe it after the lady came out and said, "I lied." After even the even the co stars are like, "That lady is not credible," because they're committed to hating Candace. This is just what it is. Giselle sitting there laughing in this lady's face while she's crying. To me, it's mean. It's mean girl all day long. But it's no different, in my opinion, than when Robin. After the tax stuff came out about uh, the black Bill Gates, Karen's husband, Robin sat on that. She went to lunch with, with Karen. Karen said, you know, Robin listened to me talk. You know, she basically she was happy in what I got from it that, you know, she was able to talk to Robin and kind of get her feelings out. She thought she had a friend. She learned very quickly when they went to that little dinner or whatever with her and Robin. She didn't. Robin laughed in that lady's face. What do you mean? Of course we discussed what was going on. Wow. I don't expect you not to discuss what's going on in the in the in the world, in the news, especially if it has something to, to do with your coworker. But I do expect you to have grace and tact. I do expect for you not to kick this lady in the stomach when you know the world is attacking her and her credibility and her husband's credibility. It's savage. So, you know, Robin does all kinds of stuff. I don't know why Karen thought she was, you know, a person she could talk to. But I do understand that Robin could be a person that can, she's okay with being in the background. She's not like Giselle that needs to, all the attention. Robin could, could come across as a person that's like, maybe you can trust her. But here's the problem. I can't trust you if you are cool with the person who's untrustworthy. Unless y'all are family. And listen, I'm the girl that believes, I don't believe blood is thicker than water at all. I'm rocking with who rocking with me. Be clear. Blood or not. However, I do understand that we, the society we live in doesn't see it that way. <laughs> the society we live in says no matter what, you always need to be loyal to your family, even though they don't show you no loyalty in some cases. I don't believe in that. I believe in if you're going to be cool with me and you get my back, I got your back. I'm rocking with whoever rock with me. Now, yes, am I still a person who will try to get my sisters back or whomever? Yes, of course. But I'm not going to be, if, if my sister's some crazy lunatic person, I'm not going to be having that person's back when I know this person's a crazy woman. I'm not going to. How could I be there? How could I say anything? She's crazy. I, I'm not going to try to justify that. Probably not going to let you talk crazy about my sister in front of me because that's crazy. But I'm not going to believe you because you're a liar. <laughs> so, of course, I. this is the part that I never understood, Candace, and I love you, sis. But it's hard for me to understand because you're a very intelligent person. But it was and is still hard for me to understand how you know how treacherous Giselle is. Giselle is besties with this treacherous person. Even if you didn't know Giselle, you have to question the company they keep. If you, For instance, if you meet Chris and all of his boys, all of his friends are drug dealers. People that don't do drugs and sell drugs don't just randomly have besties that are all drug dealers. They just don't. So you have to wonder about the company they keep. Now, I'm not going to be around people that everybody, they all sell drugs. I don't want to be around people that do drugs. Let's be clear. I don't. It's not my thing. I'm not doing it. I ain't never done a drug in my life. I, it's not my thing. So it's not a savory world. Let's be very clear. It's just not. It is what it is. So, my friends are going to be interested in the same things I'm interested in. Just saying. For the most part. I'm not bringing people to my house that I don't trust. Mm -mm. Nope. 
I bring people to my house that, that I trust. And if they want to bring someone, I'm probably letting them or allowing them to do so on the strength of how well I, or how much I trust them, meaning the person that wants to bring them. You know, because I don't need you to be like, oh, you know what? Nikki got this, that, and the third. Let's go talk to a, a cousin, the, the one that has a savory, unsavory past. Go go kick in the door with him. Mm -mm. Y'all ain't bringing trick daddy over here. Okay. Just saying. I just didn't understand that from Candace. I'm like, girl, how can you be? You said no, none, of the, none of the audience has seen this best friend, friendship, big sister. Little, we None of us have seen it. So we just saying, okay, on the strength of what Candace and, you know, Robin's kind of saying, yeah, they are, you know, whatever, really close. How then, if you're that close, don't you check Giselle? It's just her loyalty is to Giselle. That's what it is. Um, Ashley talks about how <laughs> she still is rubbing Michael's feet at night. And no one understands it. I I hope Ashley's gone. She's done her time. Because Ashley really brought absolutely nothing to the show. Michael brought everything to the show. And he's gone, allegedly, now. So, why is she here? I don't get it. And I'm not a person that wants people to just lose their jobs. But when you're doing things like what Ashley is doing, trying to intentionally cause strife in this woman's marriage, it's just reckless. I just don't understand. And everybody acts like, oh, no. And, and truth be told, we all mad at, at, at Giselle for saying what she said, and, and we should be. But somehow, nobody said anything about Ashley yet and her character. So maybe the, maybe it'll come out in part two. But no one said anything yet. Hmm. I think at some point, yeah, if at some point, NECA said to Giselle, can you just say? Because they want to have this argument about, oh, he didn't He didn't say he essayed this way. Yeah, Giselle said that he did. Giselle got on that bus after the burn session and said, I heard something about, uh, he put his hand up the lady dress and something about her, touched her thigh or something. That happened. That came out of Giselle's mouth. I'm paraphrasing the words, but go and watch it. It came out of her mouth. So if you're saying to other people, Giselle, that this man unlawfully touched another person who did not give him permission to do so, that is called sexual A. That's what it is. Go look it up. It's what it is. Y'all can try to play semantics all day. But again, this is where Bravo drops the ball. Bravo, y'all need to, y'all need to, y'all need to have whoever in the in, in your ear, Andy. This is what it is. This is what you said. We need to play this back so these people over here who are hip hip hooraying that this lady is gone because they don't like her mouth, but they're okay with this lady's mouth. They're okay with the Sesame Street characters making up lies. We're okay with all of those words as long as we can, you know, eliminate Candace and make fun of her and degrade her husband. We're fine with words. If we gotta do that, if just, some words that I don't like, we can't. We can't have that. It's too far. It's too far. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? It's the double standards. It's the double standards. There's so many of them, and that's where the colorism comes in. Cause we're not having these these standards over here. It's okay for Giselle to say reckless things, not Candace. It's okay for Ashley and Giselle and, and Robin to say reckless things, not Wendy. Why is that? For all the people who think colorism doesn't exist and it's not colorism, everything ain't colorism. Tell me why. Tell me why. Why is it okay? Why is it too far when they do it? But it's not too far for Giselle to get online or get on whatever and say, national TV, international TV, and say, that man's a sneaky leak. And you're going to infer that this man is cheating on his wife with the Sesame Street characters. You are you said out of your mouth, he touched somebody off their leg. He made you go into an hotel room. These aren't egregious things. These are acceptable things for people to say about someone else's husband on national TV and then say they didn't do anything. I felt away. 
What are we doing? We shouldn't correct this, Andy. At this point, Andy's not smarter than the fifth grader either. I have for five years plus said, stop saying Andy needs to be fired. He's doing a great job. Even though Andy ain't my favorite person, but I'm just not that person that just wants people to lose their job because you don't like them this year. I'm not that girl. But at this point, there's a pattern of behavior. And the pattern of behavior is we can allow whatever the light-skinned girls do. We can allow that. Okay? These girls over here, they, they're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to respond in kind. That is what your network has told Candace and Wendy. It's too far when Candace does it. But it isn't too far for you to get on TV. It's not too far for, for Giselle to get on TV and accuse this man of doing something to her and implying that he did something sexual. That's not too far. Please make it make sense for the people, especially for the people. There's no differences being made. There's no colorism. Help me figure that out then. Why is that okay? Why is it not too far for you to accuse some man that, that you actually know? Of SA. Why is that not too far? Let's take SA off the table. Why is it okay for you to sit on TV and lie about a man? Hmm? Andy swears Kathy Griffin has no credence. You're mad at Kathy because she lied on you and said that you used cocaine and asked her if she wanted it. That's not that's not too far, Andy. Okay, yeah, you think that's too far. Got it. What's happening to Candace, that's not too far though. Make it make sense. And even if you don't, I'll watch the next two, but I'm I, I refuse. If y'all don't rectify this, you're in agreement with it. Be clear. No response is the response. Candace got the response loud and clear and said, I'm out. And I respect you for it, sister. I do. I will say NECA did sort of stand up. She did say the girl that was lying and saying all those all the stuff about Chris. She's just like, she's not trustworthy. And she said some other things. Basically, that lady ain't credible. And I and I was here for it. Good, good job, NECA. Um, she also said to Giselle. This lets me know that NECA does have a backbone, even though she realizes she's done Giselle's bidding and whomever else because she wants to be picked and she wants to be in the circle. That's how it comes across, NECA. It is what it is. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion. You can come on Chanel's reality and dispute it, but I'm just telling you what it looked like, okay? Look like I want to be on this show. The way I get in is to, to be friends with these girls. I don't like that. That ain't how I roll, but listen, you're just trying to get your check, whatever. I don't care. So, but I do, I am happy that you could at least stand up and say, can you just say to her then? Can you say to Candace, he did not essay me. Can you say to Candace, I did say that in the, you know, in the confessional that he made me. That wasn't my intent. I slipped out. I don't recall saying that. I'm sorry. I was with it. So I appreciate that. But Giselle's being Giselle. I'm not going to. She ain't going to apologize for it. I'm just going to say what I said. Why isn't she going to apologize? Because she doesn't care. She doesn't. It, it doesn't bother her one bit to treat that man that way. It doesn't bother her one bit to create division or attempt to create division in this lady's marriage. It doesn't bother her to create the feelings that I'm certain Giselle felt after finding out her husband is still cheating on her. I'm sure that was difficult for Giselle. Probably one of the lowest things that ever happened to her, I'm sure. And I'm being funny, but I'm being real. I have a good feeling that she probably, what contributed to her feeling that way has something to do with how beautiful she is. She probably felt like, I, I'm a queen. He, 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 listen, he got the catch. He got the whole package over here. And it crushed her. I'm certain that it crushed her soul. To know that I'm all, I'm all of this. I'm a whole snack over here. Just yummy, beautiful, sexy, you know, whatever. I'm banging over here. How dare he? It had to be soul crushing. I get it. 
what I don't understand is why are you trying to do that and create that same environment and that same feeling for a lady that's on the show with you? Why? What does that do for your soul, girl? I, I, I will never understand it. Again, they talk about whatever with the swallowing stuff. I just think that was a fun kiki to watch. But there's way more bigger things that we need to really kind of discuss. And, and I don't feel like any of it was taken seriously, if I'm being completely honest. None of it was taken seriously, in my opinion. To watch to watch the y'all allow this lady to continue to try to poke at Candace when she's clearly crying is crazy to me. And you knew it was too far. Because even Andy's like, yeah, that's me. That's me. But she doesn't get checked. She continues to laugh. What does that say about someone's character? Candy, despite however y'all think about Candace, she's someone's daughter. Okay? She's someone's daughter. Just like Giselle has daughters that she wants to protect. She's just older, but she's still someone's daughter. I promise you Giselle would have a problem with someone sitting across the couch from Grace attacking her daughter laughing while her daughter is crying about the delusion of her friendship. Her friendship with someone she thought she had a really good friend with friendship with. Laughing about the things that they said about Grace's husband. Not wanting to own any of it. Wanting to double down on it. Regardless how you feel about Candace. Carter, for all the reasons you don't, you hate this lady. You would want, if it was your daughter, she's someone's daughter, regardless of whatever you think. She has feelings, she's human. Does she always get it right? Absolutely not. Could she use better word choices? Yes. There is no way in hell Giselle would be okay with another person sitting across from her grown daughter and being attacked in that way for trying to stand up to someone who is saying egregious things about her husband. That is the only reason Candace is saying whatever she's saying about Giselle and Robin and Ashley. You've said these things about someone that I'm married to. And then it's been proven that you're wrong and you still won't stop. But I'm supposed to stop. It's a double standards of it all. Okay. Is there anything else? I wrote a whole bunch of stuff, but it just took forever for Andy to get the people to say it. Feel, it feels like it took forever because it feels like Andy didn't want to, want to have to say it. I'm just telling you what it felt for me because I don't understand how the whole audience has been talking about this, this whole season to the point where Essence Magazine's right, right to not bad about the, the colorism that's happening in Potomac. And yet you still don't know, Andy? You didn't you watch the season, but you don't know that? How? Isn't that your job? Child. I cannot. I don't really have much else to say. I'm going to go to bed now because it's just, this show is just, it's beyond, it's sending, as people would say. I just, it's egregious what's happening. And I feel bad for Candace. I really, I know lots of people hate Wendy too for whatever silly reason that they hate her because she says she has four degrees and whatever. She got her body done, but they really just hate her because they like Giselle. Because what has Wendy done? Make, been condescending. When has anyone on the show not been? I'll wait. Robin hasn't been condescending. She she was so petty. She didn't even break this lady's child to a child. Listen, fun day. I can't. That's not petty. It's not petty for you to sit at this table after this lady gets attacked and still make her the villain 
after someone attacked her. How does that work? Then we're going to ice her out, even though she's the one that was attacked physically. But we're going to talk about Wendy being condescending. But we ain't going to talk about that. Help me understand. It's the, listen, it's the crazy, nonsensical, Olympic size child bending that these people will do to try their best to justify poor treatment of these dark skinned women. I, I have to call it what it is. Y'all are not doing that same thing to Ashley. And she has been condescending and, and been in everybody's business, ex exposing everybody's cheating husband or alleged cheating husband from day one. Yet she is just, she's the slipperiest person I ever seen in my life. I can't. But anyway, that's the recap. Maybe the next time I'll have a little more. I mean, I have so much more, but I'm just tired. And I can't sit on here and defend this. It's it's a, it's mentally exhausting, which is why, I, unless they apologize, I can't watch this. I can't watch this malarkey again. I can't because then I'm a part of the problem too. I'm supporting this BS too, and I can't do that. I have integrity, and I won't do that. I'm gonna need y'all to take full responsibility. I'm gonna need y'all to get a host that has the 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 balls to say no, Giselle. You're straight up lying right now. To tell them to roll the footage right now. Catch her right in this live, right here, right now. He can't do that because she's Queen Giselle. I can't. So, like I said, chime down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you guys will be watching next season with all of this. Let me know if you think colorism exists inside of this situation or if you don't. What do you think about what I said today? Let me know. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thank you for enjoying and watching and supporting Chanel's reality. Talk to you guys later. Bye. See you later.